This episode of Cognitive Dissonance is brought to you by our patrons. You fucking rock. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome at this is episode 435 of Cognitive Dissonance. See, I'm thinking about changing up the intro. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Like okay. every I read it the same, the same way I read it, I just say it. The same way, the same intonation every time. I think I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to the to the tone, the cadence. Maybe we could just record it though, Tom. And, and then, then just play it. And then I could just put it in as a bumper. That's possible. I wouldn't fuck it up as bad mm-hmm. if you did that. You I could I, I mean, could if it's going to be exactly what the I same. could also do, though, too, is just have you say a few numbers and I'll be like, this is four, three, seven. You know I mean? <laughs> that would actually like, be really I could, funny. I could just do it that way, too. That would actually be really funny because I was thinking three, like seven. It's exactly it's three, seven, robotically it's four, three, identical. Yeah. Like it is every single time. Every single time. time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, where I, may, why, I record or change it. I don't know. Should we change the intro? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think we can change the intro now. Is, I think after four hundred thirty-five, we're contractually is it part of our obligated. At this point, yeah. <laughs> if we do, we'll have to pay it alimony. So, oh, okay. All right, we're keeping the intro. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Look at the profile picture. We're going to be talking about um, Kavanaugh here to start out. But I look at the profile picture of Kavanaugh. Doesn't he look like the guy? If you're going to get somebody to play him in the movie, it's the guy from Ozarks, Bateman. Yeah, he does right? look like Does Bateman. he look like Bateman from the side? He looks like Bateman with terrible posture. Yeah. <laughs> does he look like Bateman, but his posture is like slumped forward? His neck is like, it's trying to go into his body. I it, think. I, yeah. I, there is no neck in this picture. And his like head is like 18 inches forward of yeah. his back shoulders. Like he looks like, he's like, uh, making bad decisions weighs on me so heavily. <laughs> I have to put them all on my shoulders. <laughs> Uh, uh, so this is uh, this is from the New York Times. Uh, Christine Blasey, Blasey, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, Christine Blasey Ford opens negotiations on testimony next week. Now, Christine Blasey Ford is the woman who um, is, is accusing Kavanaugh of having sexually assaulted her when she was in high school. She's about 15 years old. I think he was 17 years old at the time. The incident back in the 1980s, 82, I think, um, is said to have occurred. So um, bottom line here is this, this sexual assault accusation um the way that this is being handled is really kind of a two camp sort of thing right <clears throat> you got the, the the camp that says well this is a serious accusation and we should look into this we should find out you know what what are the teeth behind this and how does this affect whether or not we want to vote for this guy to okay. be the fucking supreme arbiter of justice so let, let's put them into the good people category okay All right. that's one way to well, classify good that people, good people okay think. you know maybe I was, we should put the i brakes wasn't trying on to connotate maybe this. we should put the brakes on it just for a little while what so, do the other people think tom uh well the, it's um let me try to summarize that position who cares the end i think that's pretty much a good Summary. Now, there's there's a little more nuance to it in the sense that they're justifying their who cares the end attitude. Um, and some of the arguments are like that, that, that some of the religious leaders, Franklin Graham, basically came out and was like, look, if it happened at all, it happened in high school. Oh. And are we going to... And Franklin Graham is one of the, the nation's preeminent religious and moral leaders, right? Yeah. Well, I saw a tweet this week, and it was from a high school student, and it said... As a high school student, all this dismissing of sexual assault during high school is very unsettling. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's part of it is that like boys will be boys yeah, kind of mentality. Yeah, so yeah. it's like it's like what are we going to do? Hold people accountable for for things they did in their past? Boys will be rapists, guys. Come on yeah. now. I I will say like you can hold me accountable. I'm I am happily held accountable. And it doesn't matter how many years you go back. 
because I don't sexually assault people. See, that's it. Like, right? and I, yeah. and like, it's, it's a, so it's easy. Like, if that's a skeleton in your closet, nobody's saying to try this guy. Like, I, and I want to be clear about that. Yeah. Nobody's saying this happened in high school. He's a 50 year old or six year old guy. Yeah. Let's haul him into court. Nobody suggests, yeah. there's no right. suggestion yeah. of that. Yeah. The suggestion is should we consider this? When debating whether or not he should become one of the nine arbiters of supreme justice. Should he be coronated? Right. Yeah, exactly. For life. Yeah. So should the next generation yeah. of Americans be saddled with a portion of his decision sure. making? Yeah. If his, it, it, does this affect his moral character? Yeah. And, I, and I said, that's actually a question I want to talk to you about. I don't know necessarily that we are the same people we were in high school, right? Sure. We talk about like rehabilitation. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Right? So- and, I know I'm not. I know I'm very <clears throat> different. Right. So I, I, I am not 100%, and this may be somewhat controversial. Please don't send me messages saying that I'm supporting sexual assault. I'm not supporting sexual assault. But I do think it's an interesting question to raise. Like, like we have to consider who somebody is, what their life path has gone, if they've committed, if, if they've done things that have been- morally reprehensible, and I don't want to mince words, sexual assault is morally reprehensible. If you've done something that's morally reprehensible in your past, how long does, does that sort of live in your moral wheel? I can answer that right now. Yeah. I can answer that question. Right I want to know. Yeah. 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 So it, it lives in your moral wheelhouse as long as you got away with it. See, and I, I feel similarly, yeah. right? I think if you got if you walked away scot free, went to a nice private school somewhere, got yourself a nice fancy law degree, and then you wound up becoming a federal judge that's been appointed for life, and now you're on the fucking Supreme Court first fucking pick, first draft pick for the Supreme Court, and you're being sworn, getting ready to be sworn in as fast as they can get you through the revol revolving goddamn door. I think it matters. Yep. I think it very much matters. I think now if that person did that when they were 18, they served time for an attempted rape. They came out, they were sorry for their actions. I think that person is a very different person. And I would, I would respect that person in a very a much deeper respect for that person than I ever would for the guy who got away with it. Right. This is a big deal. I don't know what kind of yeah. big deal this is in other countries, right? This I don't, is a big I don't fucking know. Deal. I don't know what the judicious judicial branch of those countries. I don't know how it interacts with the other branches of government in those countries if they even have those branches, right? But understand, it's literally one of the three legs we stand on, and it could very well be the most powerful. Right. Now, it's not the most active. It's a it's powerful in a passive way. Things have to come to it right. and has to make those decisions. But it is very powerful in a passive way. Yes, intense. Very, so. very powerful. Yep. Could be, like I said, the most powerful because it can overrule the other two. Right. It can make decisions overruling the other two. Yep. So it's a very powerful position. And you're yep. one of nine people who get to do that. It it can set rules that govern how we set the rules. Yeah. Think about that. It isn't. It isn't the card you pick up in community chest. It defines whether or not there is community yeah. chest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right? Yeah. That's huge. It, exactly. it changes the yeah. way we play our game. Yeah, and the way what's happening now is there's almost this feeling like some like the one side is tapping their foot like come on. Are we really doing this? Come on. Like like we're expected that this guy already got the job. He's applying for the job. Yeah. It's not and there's a whole group of people, you know, I don't, I don't care that you're going to win by one vote, like automatically, right? right? I don't care that that's the case. There's still 49 other people that are there. You know, I know, I think it's, yeah. it's something like that. It's close to that, right? That are going to say no. And so we are just only placating the majority then just to sort of fast track this. It's outrageous. Yeah. I, either we have a process or we should not have the yeah. process. Yeah. If the process is a bullshit rubber stamp. Yeah circus sideshow cut it out don't yeah. let's not have it yeah let's not let's not have our fucking dog and pony show for no reason so we get to make we, we should really i agree with you we should make a decision like do we have yeah. a dog and pony show or do we have a process? exactly and i want a process yeah and what and what's happening is <clears throat> you know they they keep on trying to trying to ram it home they're trying to you know force it on us like kavanaugh did to that girl yeah. you know where he's trying to pull her bikini off but in any case <laughs> that the, the, story the story is the story not is, a good story. No, he, 
Like, like the let's, story let's is can I, yeah. Can we, we should relate the yeah, details of the absolutely. story. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like in this story, like he basically gets he's, he's at a he's at a party. He's a teenager. He's seventeen. She's fifteen. He gets her in a room at this party, pushes her on the bed, is grinding up against her, trying to take her clothes off. She tries to scream. He clamps his hand over her mouth to prevent her from screaming. She's actively struggling to get out from underneath him in the circumstance. Yeah, he's trying to pull her bikini off. He's trying to take her clothes off. Yeah. He's too fucking drunk, I guess, to be able to do it. His buddy jumps on them. I think not to save her from the way the account is. His buddy, his buddy's drunk too. Drunk too. Yeah. And it jumps on the two of them, which knocks Kavanaugh off of her. And she runs into the bedroom or she bathroom. She into the render, bathroom. Locks and then, the door. And then eventually flees gets, the house. Gets out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, it's not, this is not like a fucking one of those cases where it's like, well, maybe it's a date gone wrong. No, I it's, mean, yeah, it's he not clamped like a, his hand over not, her mouth to prevent her from screaming it's not, while he was trying to rip yeah. her fucking clothes off. It's not a miscommunication on leaning in for a kiss. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's that's, not that. That's why I'm saying. It's like, not that. Yeah. It's this clearly an assault. Rape. Yeah. If it, And again, uh, this is presuming that this is true, right? I'm not saying that this is true. All I'm saying is, is that someone alleges that it's true right now, and we should pay attention to that because we should we should take this uh, this assault account seriously. Yeah, we should take it seriously. And this woman has has had tons of people se like send her death threats. Unreal. They've had uh, to not leave, unexpected. They they had to leave her house. As you were saying earlier before we started recording, she didn't even want to come forward. So the timeline on this thing is all. You know, a lot of people are presuming that the timeline on this is all, oh, well, this is all just a politically expedient th moment where we can just throw this out there and and, and try to uh, knock this, this yeah, yeah, knock this off course. And that's not the case. Feinstein, if that's, I think his name is Feinstein. Yeah, yeah. She had this information in July. She had gotten a message and this person had sent a couple of messages to different Congress people and to, they also contacted the Washington Post tip line, yeah. um, but didn't want to, didn't want to be out in the in the limelight specifically said they wanted to remain anonymous but everybody on that was that had had this information basically said look an anonymous message like this isn't going to do anything right we need to have some they, you have to stand up and accuse your accu, uh, accuse the person who assaulted you you have we have to see who the accuser is the public needs to see who that accuser is and so what happened was is, is someone else leaked this information. Yeah, they doxed her basically. Yeah, but she, she didn't want she didn't want right. to come out. She might not. This might have just been thrown away if it wasn't for that person coming out and doxing. Her. Right. And and then they have to switch it to this. You know, now they have to switch to you know security or leaving their house. They, I think they had to put their house up on the market because they were just like getting so many death threats. They were just terrified. People showing up. Yeah. Yeah. And so they wound up. They're they're not in their home. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, this, this, all this stuff is going on and they're talking about the FBI possibly having an investigation. And if the FBI has an investigation, I think that's one of the things that the woman was pushing for. And it's interesting that the woman who's, who's, you know, that people are saying is lying is pushing for an FBI investigation. Yeah, right. Because if I'm lying, I'm not like, well, let's call in the federal let's, bureau. Of let's call the people right? who have investigation in their name <laughs> to investigate this. You know, like right. what you would be like, no, let's just have this in the court of public opinion. Right. If it never happened. Right. But instead, this could be a really. I don't. I don't know if the FBI is going to investigate it. But lying to the FBI is a crime. And if they find out somebody lied to the FBI. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And this is, so, the stakes are very yeah, high. Very, right? very high. The stakes are the stakes here are very, very high. I was thinking about this too, and I was like, you know, it's not unexpected that this woman is being attacked, right? That's actually like not unusual for for victims of sexual assault to be blamed and and further sure. victimized when they come forward. So it's not that's not unexpected, especially when the case is high profile and people have so much of a uh, you know horse in this race, right? But I was thinking about it, it's like what think about what that message is, right? If I am, if I think that Kavanaugh did assault this woman and I don't care, I still get to vote. Yes. Make him a Supreme Court justice. Right. If I think he, I still have that option. If I'm one of the senators or whatever, I can still, if I say, look, this doesn't matter. It was when he was young, whatever. You can still vote on that. Yeah. It's okay. You can still vote on that. Like if you vote, if you have no conscience, you can vote. I have no conscience. You're allowed to do yeah, that. Absolutely. 
what what the upset here really stems from, the only way I can read this is I don't want to have to know. Don't I don't want to have to know. Don't tell right. me. Because Hear no I, evil, yeah. see no evil. Yes. Yep. How fucking cowardly is that? Oh my gosh. That, yeah. that is like, I don't want to have to know who this guy is because what I, what I want is the pragmatic result. And this guy will vote the way I want and need him to yeah. vote. So don't tell me things that are true. I don't want to know what's true. That might put me in an awkward position. What I would rather be is a fucking coward. <laughs> You know, it's interesting too is I was hearing a report today and I couldn't help but laugh. The GOP on their Senate Judiciary Committee, there's no women, right? There's women on the other side. Wait, wait but say there's, that again. There's no women the on Republicans the, the Republicans didn't bring a woman. I know, right? They didn't bring a woman. They brought they brought a knife to this gunfight. <laughs> but what they did was is they they sent out a message to, I guess, a bunch of other GOP people. To see if they could dig up a Republican woman. Can you find us a woman? They're looking for a lawyer, like a woman lawyer, to sit in and actually ask questions. I think that they're going to try their best, especially as we're leading up to a voting season where women are going to be the biggest factor in this election. They've been dropped. They've been fleeing Trump and Trump and Trump backed Mm -hmm. allies for a very long time. It's going to be a very interesting season, especially coming on the heels of something like this, where, you know, a, you know, if you get 10, 10 Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee wait, hand waving off a sexual assault. Well, what, what, what I, I read something that said that they're going to have a third party lawyer question this person yeah, to avoid the, that's yeah. what you're saying. And I, I thought about that, too. It's like. Think about that again, like think about what's not being said there, which is like, look, we want to go after this person aggressively, but, but not I don't too want aggra- not I, a, yeah, no, not, but I don't want you to see me yeah. do it. I want to be as so aggressive as I can. I'm going to yeah. hire a fucking proxy yeah. again, because I'm a goddamn coward. coward. Yeah. And what I want to yeah. do, I know if I do what I want to do, I'm going to look, I'm going to look bad like an asshole. Yeah. So instead of looking like an asshole, I will pay a surrogate asshole. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a, like I said, it's probably going to be a woman who's going to do the most of their work. Yeah, like like they're hiring a litigator yeah. who's yeah. got experience in exactly in a, in this a, kind of stuff. In a few yeah. weeks, we're going to have a sexual, a second sexual harasser. Do you think they can the, put this off until the midterm? Because the first one is Ginsburg. The first, the first <laughs> one's Ginsburg. Do you think it's they because she that? wants to peg me. That's why. She wants to. If Ginsburg wanted to Here's peg you, thing, you'd be all Ruth, over that. I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> Got a short no list. Uh, no. Yeah. I don't care what day it is. Yeah. Well, the calendar says flag day, but you can, yeah. you're not breaking out the poll. I think they're going to, I think they're going to. You think they're, they're going to yeah. confirm him before the midterm? I think they probably will. I will say though, I would not be surprised if on the way out, right as soon as they're like, all right, we're done with you, Mr. Kavanaugh. We're going to make our vote on the way out. He just reaches over and honks Feinstein's tit. <laughs> Uh, uh, and just like, so long, everybody. It's been great. I can do whatever I want <laughs> for life. At this point, though, like if if he gets in and they don't even pay any attention to this, or it just gets like the most minimal amount of lip service, yeah. would that be surprising? No, no, no. I, no nothing matters yeah. anymore. Nothing matters. Nothing matters nothing anymore. Matters. All that matters. We are in a in a. You know what? I, I was thinking about this this week. Remember how last week we were talking about how like with as far as environmental concerns, none of that's going to matter because we're going to burn it down for the quarterly profits yeah. mode, right? Yeah. We are governing the same way. Yeah, now. pretty much. We are governing in a way that says like, whatever is most practical and expedient, regardless of whether it's right. Yeah. What gets me the, what gets me the result I want today, yeah. regardless of whose house it burns yeah. down next week. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we speak that. Alright, this story is from the Raw story. Sarah Sanders will lie for Trump because she thinks she's defending God's chosen leader. Of course, this has been said by a uh, Baptist pastor. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is um, how incredibly unsurprising this is. 
but how directly in contrast it is with the messaging from, yeah. from the evangelical exactly. right, you yeah. know? Yeah. And like we were talking before the show, the, the, the thing that, the, the thing that is so fucking transparent and yet somehow purposefully unseen, I think is that like the evangelicals have a list of issues that matter to them. You know, abortion, abortion, yeah. abortion's yeah. the third one. I think they also don't like immigrants, but abortion's primarily. It's mostly, it, right? it's mostly, mostly abortion, abortion, right? Yeah, and Bibles in school or something. And so like they go out to their flock and they preach this fucking voodoo message that they've had to twist and turn into yeah. all these prophecies and yeah. craziness yeah. in order to present and paint this like morality play. That they that they're selling to the flock, but at the end of the day, this is that same old pragmatism. I want this result. I don't care that the guy that I put in ch in charge is the philanderer in chief, and that I have a whole thing about that in yeah. my church. Yeah. I don't care that like all of these actions we've deemed to be immoral, and yet our 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 our, our president engages in you know I mean like think about the lying issue. It's one of the commandments. Right. Trump lies constantly. Yeah. He lies all the time. And, and we're he's, just, caught, he's caught. He's caught in provable lies. Constantly. Just every day. Almost just, every day. It, yeah. I, I think I think the, I saw something the other day. He, he surpassed the 5,000 mark yeah. in untrue statements, untrue or misleading statements in two years, in under two years. 5,000 untrue statements. Yeah. Like, what what's interesting is like it, it's it's so transparent. Like, of course, Sanders, of course they'd be like, Yeah, Sanders gonna lie because she is as pragmatic as we are. When we stand at the pulpit, it's the same as when she stands at the podium. Her podium just doesn't have a cross on it. My pulpit just doesn't have an emblem on it, a seal on it. But we're all doing the same thing. We're lying to our flock and telling them a morality story, which we're making up on the fly, motherfucker. Yeah. And which we don't ever really, which we don't ever have to follow. And we don't because have to Because they believe. constantly break right. and they get forgiven for or right. whatever. And, and, and we don't have to even believe it's true because the ends justify the means. Yeah. And the ends justify the means is the one thing religion has never had or never sold its flock, right? The religion has always sold its flock that there are these large ideals, these, these platonic kind of yeah. ideals of good and yeah. evil and how the world... There is objective truth. Right. Yeah. And yet we're There's allowing objective right subjective and right yeah. and wrong when it yeah. gets us the fucking answer exactly. we want. Exactly. We get subjective whenever right. we want. And it's and it's because they want to be able to... They, it's, this, it's this idea that they want to be able to be immoral, act immorally, but then look moral for it. Yeah. And and they do. And and it's it's amazing... How many people fall for it? And Sarah Huckabee Sanders is just a, she's just good at it. Yeah. She's just good at it. And I think she's good at it, not because she's particularly talented. She's just good at it because those people are really, really, really open to believing it. Yeah. That's why. It's not that because anybody who watches her knows she's lying, knows she's being a hypocrite half the time. You could call it, and that's, and that's where you catch him. Is it in the hypocrisy? And even on their on the you know even the most simplest little things, there are hypocrites about. Right, and it's because they don't care about hypocrisy. They literally do not care. You could throw hypocrisy in their face a hundred thousand times, be like, "But you're a hypocrite here. Why did you say this?" But they don't care. They only care about this thing right now. They don't care about what happened two minutes ago. It's like you were saying. Yeah. We clear cut democracy. Absolutely. What the fuck do I care if I burn that forest down? I'm moving the fuck on, man. I got a whole forest in front of me. You're living in the past. We're at a place now where if there was, if it existed, if, the, if there's a thought experiment, if, if there was a magical wood chipper and into that magical wood chipper, you had to feed three babies every day. You just take three babies, you drop them into the magical wood chipper, <laughs> chews them up, yeah. and what it spits out is exactly the policies that you want. There is a group of people that would say, I would hire the wood chipper. That's what we have. Yeah. We have said, I don't care about any of these larger issues about right and wrong and good and evil. Yeah. We don't care about anything. Yeah. All that, we've, we made all that up. messy. We made it all up. Yeah. It's 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 baby juice at the other end of the wood chipper, right? Yeah. It's it's sprayed across the wall and nobody likes it. What we want is the result. I want the I want the policy. So if the policy is that Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned, then yeah, I'll feed a baby into the wood chipper. I'll throw my ideals and my morals, all these things that I'm 
that I've built the foundation, the tenets of my yeah. belief system upon, which I've sold, yeah. literally, sold literally sold to yeah. the credulous yeah. in order for me to get my big win. And I think they want that big win because that puts butts in seats and it puts dollars in the tithing basket. This is money. Yeah. It's nothing other than transparent money grubbing bullshit. Morality, I was saying one of the one of the things I said while you're talking is money, morality, real morality, real ethics, trying to understand morality is messy. It's not easy. It's messy. If they were being honest and genuine, you run into real problems when you think about something like abortion, right? Mm -hmm. I run into I have right. some very serious problems when I talk about abortion because I'm not, you know, I am a I am completely pro-choice to a certain extent. But there's a point where I start thinking, well, that's a that's a person, yeah. And so I there's I waver at a certain point, right? Because it's messy, because it's not easy, because it's not a hundred percent. The moment the the cell is fertilized or whatever, it's it's a it, it's it's a baby. Yeah. Like that's absurd. That's an absurd way to think. But if you are if you if you don't have a way to like if you don't care about reality, mm -hmm. it's a real easy way to think. Yeah. And again, if you don't care about your own actions, because how many times? Have these people taken their mistress to Planned Parenthood? Right. You know, well, as often when as she it, needs yeah, it. Cecil. When, when I when I yeah. got to make sure, I'm make sure because it's I'm different than everybody else because it, morality yeah. is easy for them when it really should be messy and hard right. and hard to because again another thing too is like when people throw hypocrisy back at me it makes me think right. oh am I being a hypocrite well how do, how am I not being consistent and does it matter yeah I think about that yeah and that's a that's a shitty moment when that happens yeah. to me I'm always like. Fuck. Yeah. I wanted to be better than that. And I'm not. And now I have to now I have to spend time with that. And I have to think about I gotta how think to do about better. It. I got to think I have about to it. reconcile yeah. that I didn't do better before. Yeah. Right? right. And and that is a as always a shitty feeling. Yeah. Like when that happens, and it happens to me. Yeah. When that happens, I'm like fuck. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I was I, you know? Yeah. And it should feel bad. Yeah. But you can avoid the feeling bad. You can avoid the feeling bad by just kind of rationalizing out your worldview differently, yep. right? Yep, yep. And then you don't have to you be have like, to well, it. am I applying the same standard to myself I apply to other people? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you just don't pay right. attention to yeah. it. It's super right. easy. Yeah. When your body burns this stuff with no carbohydrates, what happens is you build up the clinkers. <laughs> I love this. This is from ChristianPost.com. <clears throat> uh, we prayed, and look at that. <laughs> Pat Robertson credits prayer for redirecting Hurricane Florence away from his ministries. All right, so this is from an episode of the 700 Club. Robinson noted that weather forecasters labeled the new direction of Florence bizarre, and he said the change of course was because you and I prayed. He said, we, we prayed. prayed. We prayed about it. And look at that. We asked the Lord to take it out of here, and he did. It's like a shield that God has put around us. Why? Because God's people prayed, and that's what happened. This is a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. When we pray, God does miracles. So here's his prayer. I don't want it to hurt Regent. I don't want it to hurt CBN. I don't want it to tear up the beautiful campus. And I don't want to tear these trees down. I don't want to see any damage. I don't want a bunch of glass flowing. Evidently, in his mind, the hurricane that's was a, going to... That's a week. That's a weekly prayer service? That's what he said? That's the most uninspired prayer I've ever heard. I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want a hurricane. I don't, I don't want to have to sweep up after the thing. These shoes are too tight. Who hurts? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. I am having a temper tantrum. I don't want a hurricane. That's are you exactly kidding it. me? That is exactly it. Are you it. kidding me? You're what of a boring prayer service ever. Listen I, to somebody whine for 10 like, minutes. In his mind, he moved. I think about like yeah. what success means to him. Yeah. It didn't hit me. Yeah. It hit you. I want to read part of this. It says the death toll for Florence rose to 17 when a three-month-old died after a tree crashed into their mobile home. <laughs> yeah, but it's so, but 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 CBN is yeah, beautiful. But, yeah, but what God God said was, look, I, I know you spend a lot of money on them greenskeepers. We don't <laughs> we don't spend any money on trailers and hillbillies, so that's fine. You can real. splat them around a tree. No How about worries. the two mentally ill people that drown in a van in the river? Oh no, really? Yeah, there were two mentally ill people being transported by the police in a van. And the van got overtaken by water in a flood. <gasps> and because they were in the back in the lockup area, oh, they couldn't no. be extricated. Oh, no. And the driver and the other yeah, guard sure, they got, got out. out. Yeah. yeah. And they were rescued from the top of the van. And the two mentally ill people that were being transported for their safety drowned. 
So that's okay. Oh my gosh. Right? In this world, that's okay for a baby to get hit with a tree yeah. and mentally ill people to drown would've in been, a fucking storage container. Probably would have been, been better if there was a big Indian guy just to hold a pillow over their face <laughs> instead. Throw a, throw <laughs> a sink, throw a the sink out a window <laughs> and run for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> that is a super sad story. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, that is super tragedies sad. Tragedies are yeah. tragic. Because, well, it's, 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 <laughs> I'm sure the other 14 people that we didn't mention right. had equally tragic parts. Parts scary of what dog. happened yeah, to them, right. right? There's a scary death that's associated with each one of those people, whether it's their fucking dialysis machine got pulled out of the wall because the nurse was running away from exploding <laughs> window or something. Like, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah, whatever it right. is. There's a horrible story attached to all these people, but good news, your trees are still standing. Yeah, the good bad. news is rich people who are well insured yeah. are going to be just yeah. fine again. Yeah, because they thought right. about the, the, the motion of the hurricane really hard. I, I love too that like, in his world, his prayers were strong enough to move it, but not out to sea. <laughs> I know, right? It still had to kill seventeen. I just people. it's got it's got to yeah. fuck some shit up. Yeah, it's look. like it's like look, I can make it so the tiger doesn't come here. Yeah. Right, it can be not here. Yeah, I can make it go down the street. Yeah, and eat. There's those a tiger. Kids. Should it eat the rich yeah. people or the poor people? <laughs> Well, I I'm re- I shut my door and my doors are tiger proof. Yeah, they're fine. God yeah. let me have tiger proof doors. Also, because he loves money. me more. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What a mean old man. He's a super mean what prick. What a mean old a man. Mean old prick. Ready to stick it in the glory hole? Get links to their Facebook, Twitter, and if you still use it, Google Plus account at their website, dissonancepod.com. If you need to be all discreet about it, contact them by email at dissonance.podcast at gmail.com. Or you can call and leave a ransom message at 740-74-DOUBT. That's 740-743-6828. Want to hear Cognitive Dissonance commercial free and gain access to exclusive content, including full patron-only shows? Head to patreon.com forward slash dissonance pod and become a patron to support the show on a per episode basis. Love commercials? Not ready to become a patron? Give the guys a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher or tell your buddies in the drunk tank about the show. We want to send a big sloppy glory hole to all the patrons and people who rate us. You fucking rock. A story comes from Dallas News. Um, Texas board votes to eliminate Hillary Clinton and Helen Keller. Oh, it would have been better if that's where the, the like, the, it was a period at the end of that sentence. Texas board <laughs> votes to, to eliminate, eliminate Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. And that was the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. Oh my God, to Texas board votes to eliminate Hillary Clinton and Helen Keller from history curriculum. Um, my God, I'm so glad that Helen Keller is not alive to not read this today. But I'm... Um, That's ableist. <laughs> You're the worst, Tom. I can't believe how ableist you are. Guys, I just want you to know I'm not ableist and Tom is. I'm so. just saying it's better to be able to see than not see. And... That's just true. <laughs> I'm sure someone could have told her. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> She'll listen to it on Conti- audio. Continue on, Tom. Continue on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's fucked up. Helen so, Keller jokes, guys. Oh, God. Uh, Remember when those were a she thing? She screamed her mittens off. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I knew like 40 Helen Keller I remember, jokes when I was a kid. Uh, I played Helen Keller in my freshman year. Wait, what? Yeah, so I got in okay. trouble. I have, it's kind of a funny oh, story. Oh, no. This is going to be so horrible. My freshman year, our class, we did... Uh, there's a Helen Keller play. I forgot what it's called. I don't know. It, it, it's a talkie, though. It's just ironic. But there's, there's a Helen Keller play with a lot of dialogue you wouldn't suspect. Everybody in the audience has to read it through Braille. <laughs> Yeah. I think that would be a bad play. I don't know. The second to make it anywhere on Broadway. Um, and like my my freshman year English teachers decided that we were going to read it and then we were going to each row was going to perform an act. Is it like a musical like like instead of Hamilton it's just Keller? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's always doing jazz hands. <laughs> Just jazz hands, just jazz for, hands for forty minutes. It's actually, just jazz hands. actually, when you go like this in in sign language, it's applause. Is it? Yeah, in sign language, that makes sense, in sign language, yeah, moving your hands back and why forth is applause. Hands, yeah, it okay. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was a smart ass and I was, I got in trouble a lot my freshman year for, you know, being disruptive and making smart ass comments. Yeah. And so the teacher there was just like, hey, well, then a smart ass out of you. She's like, 
and you will be Helen Keller. And she <gasps> pointed at me and I was like, fuck, I'm Helen Keller. So I'm a 14 year old, 13 year old oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're yeah, already like, sure. I'm kind of afraid of everything, you yeah, know, because you're yeah, shitty. Because you're shitty. And then uh, I understand be- this too, ladies. Boys, when they're that age, are the shittiest. Oh, we're garbage. Are genuinely yeah. the you're shittiest. Just, you're just, you are rancid, oh, stinking dumpster juice. Absolutely the worst. You're, the, you're just, As, and you don't get better yeah. until you're 37. 30. It's, it's like real bad. Nine. <laughs> I'm waiting 40, for the changeover. Six. Myself. <laughs> so, like, I was like, fine. You know, fuck, you, fuck me. Fuck you. So, I got to be, I was supposed to be Helen Keller. And I'm like, well, at least I don't have to learn any lines. You know, like, oh, but I was supposed to pantomime and act out all these, all these different things. And at one point, Helen Keller in the scene, I act out oh, the God. last scene where she's the oh, only no. line Helen Keller gets, oh, which God. is wah, 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 which she speaks yeah, for the first right. time. It's yeah, a yeah. cathartic moment yeah, in her personal oh, journey no. that I mocked mercilessly oh, with my Jesus performance. Christ. So like we had a table and one, like a folding table was part of the set in the front of the class. And I was really? supposed to throw- you guys had like a whole set thing? We yeah. used to just sit in our desk and read those. Oh no, we had to get up in front of the class and act it oh, all out. Oh, see, when we were, when it was in English class, it never did that for us. It was so, always just sitting and reading. I, I was supposed to throw a tantrum at one point. Oh, you're and good so at And so I was those. like, so I picked up my big, stupid 14 year old body. I threw this dumb thing in the air and I crashed onto the table and I broke her table. I was like, ah! And I smashed her table. It's like WWE. <laughs> I did. And she was like appalled. She was absolutely appalled. And I kicked and screamed through this great big fit, like a great big temper tantrumy shitty fit. Uh-huh. And then the very last thing oh, that we had God. to do, I was supposed to say, wah, 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 wah. And I knew it. And my portion of my line came up and I just stood there and I looked around. And I was like, oh, my line. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> So I took like all the juice. Did you get an F? Yeah, I got an F. Uh, I I got an A in the class though because like it's one assignment and I was like, fuck me, fuck you. But I want to talk about this story, this Helen Keller story. I want to, I know we shifted, shifted gears, but I want to talk about this Helen Keller story because they're trying to take out parts of these things that are, you know, that are American history. Yeah. And they're trying to say this stuff. And then it's not that they're trying to say it didn't happen. They're just don't want to mention, right? They just don't add it in by omission. At one point it says the board also voted to keep in the curriculum a reference to the heroism of the defenders of the Alamo, which had been recommended for elimination, as well as Moses influence on the writing of the nation's founding I know. document. I know. They also, they were also required to tell the story of how the United States came into being when a giant eagle <laughs> laid the Liberty egg in, in 1776. And, and the Liberty egg. that's when Ben Franklin made, made a nest out of all the spare kite string he had. <laughs> and then they laid the Liberty egg and it just, I have a quiz for you. Oh yeah. What a Helen Keller and Hillary Clinton have in this have in common. They're women. Oh, imagine that. What did we get rid of? We kept the old guy who didn't even exist. Yeah. We kept yeah. Moses. We kept that guy in there. Right? Yeah. We kept a fictional character yeah. in our history book. Yeah. That one's in there. We kept a bunch of dudes who all died unsuccessfully defending a building that was going to be torn down anyway, but two incredibly influential women figure. Yeah. Think about Like, it's not accidental. It's none of this shit is accidental. And it's, it's like the stories that we tell shape the way that we think about how the world happened. And it, it helps, it helps shape the way that we think about how the world should happen. When we, when you get rid of like the stories of powerful women, that's like, we're doing that on purpose. That is a, that is a very active disenfranchisement of women by reducing the amount of influence that influential women have on the story we tell our children about this country. It's interesting because a couple of times in the past, I had mentioned the ratio of men to women in Congress. I've mentioned this on, it's on 50, the show 50. a couple of times. 50-50. And uh, I've gotten really shitty email because of it. And one or two times people were saying like, like I, I, and maybe not just email because it was YouTube comments too. There was a couple of YouTube comments in there where, you know, I remember <clears> I, I specifically when we were on Seth's show, there was a bunch of people who glommed onto that. Okay. And, and posted about that when we were on Seth's show and they, they sort of attacked that. And I, I'd got, I had gotten a comment, I think a long, long time ago when we first started this show about it. Um, cause I had mentioned it as well. 
But that's important to, to recognize and to mention all the time. And the reason why it's important is because when you don't show stories about women who do succeed in politics, because even though Hillary failed to become president, she did succeed in politics other places. Oh my God, yeah. As a senator, she was incredibly, uh, as a and, secretary and of state. as secretary of state. <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, you don't get elected to that role, but still she's succceeded in other parts of politics, right. you know. Um, she succeeded in an electoral basis and she's also uh, succeeded as, um, you know, as an appointed nominee, basis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she's been a successful politician. And, um, and when you don't talk about things like that, women don't think they can think that that's place for them, right? There's a reason why, you know, when you start looking at women's careers, when you come out of the fifties, they had nurse, teacher, nothing else. Yeah, right. Right. There's a reason why is because those, those were professions. Those were the examples. Those were the examples that they, <clears throat> they learned about when they were growing up. This is, this is what they learned that they could be. Mm -hmm. They never, they never learned that they could be a famous Senator. What they learned was they could just be a nurse or a teacher, a school teacher. That's what they had in front of them. And we talked to Karen Garst that one time. She remember, she even said just as much. I didn't want to get into nursing. That's what my mom was in. So I became a teacher. Right. Because those were the two roles that she was offered right. as, a, as growing up. So it's super important to talk about that disparity in this in the Senate and in the House. And to say every time they take that photo where they say this is our freshman class for the House of Representatives and you see one lady and 70 dudes and 69 of them are white, gray-haired dudes. Dude, yeah. That yeah. says something. That yeah. means something. When we tell our story, when we tell the stories that we tell in history class, many of the characters that we choose to tell stories about, we tell stories about because they offer a representative example. And if if the only representative examples are as you noted are are, are similar to our congressional lineup, yeah. Where it's like, "Yeah, hey, here's what a bunch of white, you know, Old white dudes did. Well, the world looks like it's run by old white dudes. Yep. And you know, the reality is the world is run by, by old white yeah, dudes. Old and unless white dudes. Yeah. we want to, like, if we want to change that, if we want to offer women and, and you know, Minorities, other people, yeah. if we want their voices to matter, we're going to need some representative examples. Is trusting God important? It's the only thing that gets favor from him. He doesn't respond to pain or tears or heartache. He only responds to being believed. So stories from the raw story, uh, Fox news priest. I love that line too. Like Fox news has its own priest. That's awesome. Fox news priest assures storm victims. Well, the they definitely have their own, they are their own, uh, wing for sexual assault there <laughs> <laughs> at Fox news. So, so it, it doesn't seem like it's that far. At yeah. least they pay out their settlements. Exactly. So they, don't, true. they don't rehome their they anchor don't, somewhere they don't, else. They don't. They definitely let them go. Right. They yeah. let them go. Like yeah. Bill O'Reilly shows yeah. up at like KQOD Oklahoma's <laughs> home for news or whatever. Really, <laughs> still he's still writing. I saw a recent post from him. Like he's still writing. I don't know if he's like books and yeah, shit. I think he is. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? He's got all the like. What what bad thing happened to Bill O'Reilly? He's still rich as fuck, and now he just doesn't have to go to work anymore. Yeah. Right. Like if somebody, that's literally the only thing I want out of my life. I know like his worst case scenario you need to get is into, like, you need to get into a sexual scandal. See I if you can have been trying just get in the Supreme court. Everyone's court, like, uh, get in the Supreme court and honk Ruth Bader Ginsburg's tit once. Once I've yeah. done it three times. You, you do it once. You do it once and dust comes out. <laughs> <laughs> just makes sense. She's like, she's like old papyrus. She just, <laughs> she's just, just, oh God. Just, Oh, it's just a robes, a pile of robes and glasses. Just nothing there. <laughs> just, just, oh God. Oh God. Did somebody like a signature shirt? Did somebody touch Ruth? <laughs> oh my God. Did somebody touch Ruth? Did somebody walk by her? So they just, they just we come over. Her, we hermetically sealed her. <laughs> they come by, they water the ashes, it reconstitutes into <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> well, she turns into that, she turns into that plant creature from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I am Roots. Roots. Roots or whatever. <laughs> I am Ruth. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, Fox News priest assures storm victims that little girl who died in hurricane is part of God's purpose. Oh, good Lord. I do want to point out that while he did reassure some people, who he did not reassure was the dead little girl. 
Because she's dead. Jesus. When you scroll down here, they have the best photo on Raw Story. He looks like he's trying to push his eyes out like <laughs> ping pong balls out of his head. Like it looks like he's playing beer pong with his eyes. Like he's going to shoot them across the room and they're going to land in a solo cup. What he, what he looks like to me is there's a surprise proctologist. <laughs> also, this guy could be played by Bateman too. I think in the TV movie, this he guy, could, this guy could pull it. off a of Bateman. Yeah. I'm going to play a little bit of this clip um, this is from Fox News. Welcome back. Well, where is God in a hurricane? It's a big... Well, you see, I'm in the eye of the hurricane. That's where the controls are. I, I drives it around with my big... It steers like one of them fancy no-turn lawnmowers. I'll tell you where I am. I'm steering it away from the white area. How's that? <laughs> what, what do you want me to do? Pat Robertson says, don't hit my... Pla- I gotta park this thing somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's funny because they they only mention it when it's when it lands in a white area. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's, Hey, where was God yeah. during Katrina? Yeah, we, I don't know. Where is where was God during Maria? We right. th- we forgot about those people instantly. Well, it's so funny because the same time that Hurricane Florence hit North Carolina, a super typhoon hit the the same day, hit the Philippines and then moved over to mainland China and fucked shit up there. And that thing made Hurricane Florence look like yeah, a, a got, fucking fart. It got downgraded to a tropical a storm really yeah, quickly. Right, and it yeah. was a one when yeah, it made when landfall. It yeah. The super typhoon was like, I'm a super typhoon. <laughs> Basically That's, displaced half of the Pacific. Like, yeah. I don't know if super is bigger than mega or yeah, taller than ultra know. or yeah. if it's a grand reopening yeah. or if it's under new management. <laughs> I don't know how that works. But when you throw super yeah. in front of the word typhoon, it means, it's God in that it one. It just means it brings you your groceries. It's a <laughs> super typhoon. Yeah. Question many people are asking this morning as Florence ravages the South, killing at least 11 and leaving thousands without power and their homes. Joining us now with a message of faith and hope at times like this. A guy whose house is not underwater. Faith and hope at times like this. I guess like, well, I hope it does it in my house. <laughs> what the fuck else are you hoping for? Food and yeah. some clean water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. News religion contributor, Father Jonathan Morse. Good morning. Good morning. I saw a story on NBC a night or two. I guess it was last night night about a group of folks in North Carolina that waited out the storm Mm. in a church and they sort of came together. But there are other people who are watching this saying, gosh, it's so hard right now to watch this. (laughs) They're saying, gosh, it's hard to... You know what? I don't like There's doing people this. who are watching this that are saying, gosh, it's hard to watch this. But my tragedy yeah. porn is on anyway. It's not. It's it's certainly not as bad as those people who died, but right. it's hard to watch. I don't. It's not as bad as living it. Yeah. And a little weird to masturbate to. <laughs> That's super weird. <laughs> Still got to get a job done. Whether it's a hurricane or, or some other hurricane-like reality in our lives. What the fuck does that mean? A, a hurricane-like reality? Well, I, what the fuck? <laughs> that even mean well, what he's going to do in a second is he's going to move away from the tangible question of a hurricane which is real and full of water and you got to really deal with that thing yeah. and then he's like but you can also have lots of hurricane like moments in your life <laughs> like <laughs> when you're out of groceries or something like he just he moves away from the yeah. practical into the spiritual sure because there's no answer yeah. for this yeah because basically there's there's no way to protect the good Right. In those. So you just have to be like, well, good people die sometimes. And that's a hard thing to say. Yeah. So he just won't. Yeah. Instead, what it do is broaden the question until it's meaningless. Um, We get to a point where we say, gosh, you know, like, where is God? And I uh, absolutely understand that. Um, And I think it's because we spend a lot of our lives collecting security blankets, right? Like houses to live in so that it doesn't rain on us. (laughs) Yeah. Or... Like once your house goes like literal blankets yeah. to huddle under and wait for a new house. He's about to shit. <laughs> because you're homeless. All right. <laughs> With security blankets, like food to eat. Yeah. Like this. Pussy. Yeah. <laughs> security blankets, like a living pet and our relatives. Yeah, we get a nice home. We get money. We get a job. We get friends around us. Security blankets to make sure that we're going to be okay. And that's not a bad thing either. That's pretty rational. It's what mm-hmm. human beings do. But in the arc of our existence, right, we build up those security. We collect those security blankets. But as we get older... Right. And especially in old age and sickness or in a situation like this, a hurricane, all of those security blankets get tossed out. Our relatives and our close friends. Old age. Because when you're. Yeah, mom, leave me alone. Get out of my room. (laughs) (laughs) It's not your room if I rent it. Well, (laughs) (laughs) 
And I think it's a time in which we can either become better people and focus on our relationship with God and our purpose for existing. Unless you're dead yeah, like no. that baby. Yeah, or, or you just don't have a home anymore. Or like everything you own is fucking now has to sit out in the sun for, I don't know, six straight months before it's usable again. I, yeah, like this whole idea that like tragedy makes you a better person is a lie. It is. A, that is not a true thing. Can it? Yeah, maybe it can. Does it always? No, absolutely. No. It does not always. No, no, no. Does it frequently? Yeah, no, probably. I don't think so. Probably not. I'll tell you, like. If something like if if one of my kids fucking dies, if somebody if the closest people in my life die, so I'm not going to come away from that like, well, I'm a better man for that. No, I just, yeah. I'm going to be worse off. Right. I'm going to have terrible psychological and emotional scars that are going to hurt all the time without ever stopping. I'm not going to be like, well. No, God wouldn't have given that to me if I couldn't handle it. Or else we can become bitter and we can just be cut, lose all hope. And I've seen it go both ways. How do you stay be better as opposed to bitter? Because you're right, right, it could go either way. Yeah, well, if, if your life is really um, founded on those security blankets, right? It's if you build your house on sand. Well, what if you built your house in North Carolina? Yeah, what if you just built a house because you have to live in a house <laughs> and now it, you don't have that house? <laughs> Where do you live now? Cut this crap. Like, cut all this, like, yeah. existential sort yeah. of metaphorical garbage. Yeah. Like, if your baby's dead yeah. and all your belongings are gone, where do you sleep tomorrow except for on a bed of your own sadness? Yeah, right. Like, right. You are watching the beginning and the birth of the new world order. And you want to call me crazy? Go to hell. Call me crazy all you want. All right, this story's from Right Wing Watch. This is Mark Taylor. John McCain was executed by a military tribunal who shot cancer into his brain. <laughs> and a cancer gun. Here we go. This is this is Mark Taylor. When they drop the hammer on these guys, and I believe there will be executions, and we with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Both know that John McCain was executed. Oh, yeah, we know that. With a cancer hammer. <laughs> we definitely know John McCain was executed. <laughs> they, they, Why was yeah. he executed? Well, By who? Yeah, How? Well, they had a cancer hammer, Tom. They dropped it on him. I guess. And maybe it was an accident. They just dropped the hammer. They didn't, they didn't mean to. They're walking around with this cancer hammer. Those not things paying are any not, attention. You know, just it, whoopsie doodle them. You ever you go know? to Ace Hardware yeah. and you and, mean to grab a claw yeah, hammer? He was susceptible because he was 82. <laughs> Uh, you know, under military tribunals, hmm. and which is another reason why Kavanaugh, uh, Judge Kavanaugh, is they're screaming so loud. They're trying to disguise it that is that it's abortion that they're worried about. That's not what they're worried about. They want a solid five four vote for the military tribunals because if you no notice the line of questioning for Lindsey Graham uh, the other day, he, he said, "Hey, you know, if someone who's a civilian commits treason, does it fall under civil or military?" And he said, "Military." And that put a shock wave. That put the fear of God in every one of them. That's why they're fighting this guy so hard. It's not Roe versus Wade yet that they're worried about. It's the military tribunals because they know it's going to cost them lives and they're going to be executed. So so he's saying that the Democrats are worried that they're going to be executed by military tribunals. Right. That's what for that's reason. That's why that's uh, the argument. Yeah. Right now. But yeah. So the argument is is that they're like the reason why they're afraid is because mi if military tribunals become a thing. They'll be executed. Wow. Okay. That is the most bad. It's paranoid as fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. Can, I think it gets better. Hold on. Has there ever been a military tribunal executing anyone in the States? I don't think so. I don't think so either, man. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm willing to... Like, I'll he, tell you what. It hasn't happened yeah. in the last yeah. 40 years. I, I, if you have an example, please send it because I'd like to see it. The most recent example. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, you said... To, this isn't a question, but I'm just curious. You said that McCain was executed... Uh, obviously, there's a story of going around that he had brain cancers. That wasn't it. There's a story there's going, a around. Story going around. There's yeah. A, there's a story that his brain told everybody. <laughs> a story going around. Like, you know, I heard it once floated. It, you know what, man? This is the problem when all news sources yeah. are equivalent, yeah, right? Equivalent, yeah. Yeah. There's a story going around. I think it was reported. Yeah. On every credible every single one place. Yeah. Every but there were also one. crackpots. So yeah. I mean, which hey, one is it? I tomato, mean, tomato. Because every single news source out there said he died of brain cancer. What do you have to say 
crazy firefighter profit. Right. I don't think that was it, honestly, because then you had what came out uh, the other day. Uh, who was it? Um, Kasich slipped up on an interview and uh, on CNN and said that, uh, you know, he was basically executed. <laughs> so, no, he didn't. He didn't say that. I watched the clip. Did you? What did he say? He, he's, it's, a, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a slip up. He says put to death. But what I think he's saying is taken off of stuff. You know what right, I mean? Like right. to keep him alive. Right. That's what he's, that's what he means to say. And he doesn't say, he says put to death. He doesn't say executed though. Oh my God. That's a totally different thing. Put to death. Somebody right, I put, I put, fucking look, man. I put fucking three pets to death. That's not, I didn't execute them. I didn't put, Somebody I didn't put like, a little cigarette in their mouth and tie a fucking <laughs> blindfold on them and make them stand up against the wall and say, Vive la France before I shot them. <laughs> Somebody like scoops up a sleeping John McCain yeah. in their arms and like lovingly carries him out to the van and like sets him down on his Jesus, favorite blanket. And he's all curled Poor up John and McCain. old and shit. He pooped himself a little bit. We're trying to clean it gently from his buttocks. They're cleaning him up and then they're sticking the thing in yeah. it. Like, who wants to get their last pets in? <laughs> Everybody's standing around <laughs> petting John McCain. And crazy. he like looks hopefully and lovingly what up do you and think, like, guys, am I gonna make the hand it? of his <laughs> wife that he's leaving behind? Guys, am I gonna make it? I, I, I think I'm, <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> I brought his favorite toy. He can't hold it anymore, but he just yeah, rests just, next to his body. It just, yeah. <laughs> his favorite toy was a model of the jet he was shot down in. <laughs> you know. oh, they they just, go to sleep. They got a plaster of Paris go hand print of John McCain. Go to sleep, little Johnny. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, John, you can let was, go now. Oh, it was a slip wow. of the tongue, and it's like you cannot. And I told someone this the other day. I said, "Look, when you watched John McCain's funeral and you saw the entire cabal right there in one spot, mm. and they could have rounded them all up right there, man, if they wanted to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Man, these people weren't smiling. <laughs> uh, Who the fuck? Not a funeral. <laughs> Not a funeral. No shit, they weren't smiling. <laughs> Who's smiling at a funeral? What are you, the Joker? <laughs> with you <laughs> none of these guys were happy at that funeral that proved what does that prove i've gone to, i've gone to services for people i barely know and don't genuinely care about and i don't smile you were like because i'm not a ghoul <laughs> you didn't walk in and be like bra fist right. bump <laughs> like, like what are you doing are you serious we'll play little shirts and skins in the parking lot <laughs> what's up man <laughs> Oh god. my god, they weren't, they weren't smiling. smiling at the funeral. <laughs> There's your proof, guys. Jeez, sheeple, wake up! It's like that song, like, laugh at a funeral. <laughs> What's that stupid bare know. naked lady song? Oh yeah, I'm the kind of guy that laughs, laughs at, at a funeral. funeral. <laughs> I don't know the rest of it. It's that, it's it's what people say that you sound like uh -huh. when you start the show. Yeah. It's been one week since you I don't know. I'm in the rest. Diddled of me. <laughs> diddled me. That's the Catholic priest song. It's been one week since he diddled me. I, I mean, they knew that he was dead. Yeah, everybody in the whole room was like, "Jesus!" Yeah, they knew Christ. his fucking grieving family was God. there. God sucks. We took him off that medication, and bam, out like a light. <laughs> John McCain was a prophetic marker in time that we have moved from judgment to justice is now being served. Period. And and they Wait, know so it. Is he saying that he was militarily tribunaled? Yeah, and he's saying that John McCain is part of this what cabal. What the fuck do they need fucking a, a, a vote for then? Everybody is part of the cabal. Well, well you know, I don't understand though. Like, like the reason why they were upset about Kavanaugh yeah. is that they would suddenly have this 5-4 vote. Well, if John McCain was executed by this already, what do you need Kavanaugh for? I don't know. They what could. do you, you need him I for? You're literally doing it right now. <laughs> Why am I? That doesn't make any sense, man. <laughs> doesn't make right? Sense. Am I? No, I'm not fucking. I'm, I'm not. I mean, like, I'm trying to. I, I need the, Yeah. You, what do you, We need the power to do what we are doing. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't. You have already the, did it. I don't have the power your to do it. Your cancer hammered him to I death. I didn't do it. I didn't have the he power took, to do what I did. You took your cancer hammer. I need to do it more. And you dropped it on more. him from a very high height. <laughs> and you hit him directly in the skullet. <laughs> and they know that if they don't do something to stop this, 
they're next. So if they, because John McCain was the number three guy. Yeah. But what stopped them from John McCain? Nothing. They executed him tribunally or whatever. Why aren't they next now? Yeah, why don't they just do it right now? Also, he's about to say that John McCain's the number three guy. Why didn't you get the number one guy? Well, who's the number one guy? It's Barack Obama. Why are, okay. All right. What's your bet? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's number one? Yeah. Who's number two? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's one and two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Barack Obama being number one. Hillary Clinton. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Fine. Be right. Stupid. Yes. I didn't know. Does black win over pink? I don't know which is. Well, you can't make the black guy number two. <laughs> <laughs> That's just racist. Barack Obama being number one, Hillary Clinton being number two, and John McCain being number three. What is it? John McCain? What is the third Poor one? Shitty John what? McCain do. What are you talking about? He just died recently, so it's a good excuse to have this crazy. What about Joe Biden? What? No, what about like. I don't know, like any of the George fucking Soros. What about, well, what about like any of the Democratic senators over the Republican one who only, I don't know, disagreed with Trump one time? Like, this is a guy who ran for president to be the Republican president. <laughs> you know, and he only like really significantly disagreed with Trump on like one or two issues. Right. Yeah. So what? I, I, he's I, not a traitor. I well, no, he's not a traitor. Barack Obama. But that's what they talk about treason, though, I know, right? But, like their definition of traitor is. I don't know that guy. And they did like, wait, wait, we haven't even decided what the treasonous, the treason treasonous thing is. He's number three. What's the reason for the treason? Hillary Clinton. He's the third worst traitor in the country. <laughs> so if they can take down the head of ISIS, John McCain, you know the what I mean? Head of ISIS? What the fucking head of ISIS is John McCain? Is ISIS a kind of cancer? The head of ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a whole got head it. full of ISIS. You got a bad case of ISIS. Sorry. Uh, We're going to have to amputate your head. <laughs> also, like, at this point, like, ISIS is defeated. I know. Yeah. Like, we're just done with that yeah. now. We're, like, what the fuck? Yeah. John McCain is the head of ISIS. <laughs> John McCain is the head of the Islamic State. Maybe what they're saying is they cryo froze him so his head is on ISIS. <laughs> 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 That's what they're saying. <laughs> I mean, all, uh, the, the number three guy out of all of this. They know they're next. Wow. So that's why they're scared to death. That's why they're screaming. <laughs> Literally, why, why would they, they have just it first? Go now? Like, what's stopping them from dropping the cancer hammer on all those people? If I have a super secret cancer sniper rifle. It's not a cancer, though, because they said he, he didn't. They, they, he yeah, doesn't they believe say, he dies yeah, of cancer. We're to keep bringing up cancer because that's the only the that's most the likely cause dies. of death. Yeah, 100% but 100% would happen. But, you know, yeah, but maybe like, it's something else. If I could kill, like, if I was afraid of three people. Why wouldn't I kill the person I'm most afraid of first? Yeah. Like, right. I just would do that because I'm not an asshole. <laughs> you kill, you kill the, the one as a warning to the other to the two other, that you're Don't be do scary. It. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were scarier, but I killed someone less scary so that you'll be less scary. So you should have to be less scary than the number three. Yeah. But then I don't know who's four because he's three now. I don't know how the numbering system. I'll get back to you in the number <laughs> system. <laughs> It's it's confusing. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. So this story is from Right Wing Watch. This is Rick Joyner. Hurricane Florence will be a major, major blessing. Absolutely. Where does Rick Joyner live? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out where he lives. I'm going to guess he's not swimming right now, unexpectedly. <laughs> he's not taking... Probably not, no. <laughs> he looks like he's above water. Yeah. This is going to turn into a major blessing. And we've been... Look, it's going to turn into a major blessing after we wrap, after we wind up wiping up all these rotten bodies. It's going to be a major blessing. Don't do you worry. think he's mistaken and he thinks it's going to hit brown people? Is that why he's saying this? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> brown people! <laughs> brown people, brown people, brown people! <laughs> through a lot of devastating storms before, and they... They do turn into a major blessing. It's hard to see at first yeah. because of the devastation. It's hard to see because when they when it squishes that three year old, it gets in your eyes sometimes. Uh, you gotta wipe and it's that just out. Hard to see through, but you if you persevere, yeah, and just wipe that three year old off your face. Well, baby, I'm blood gonna is oily. wash yeah. that three year old <laughs> out of my hair. It's hard to see when you. You know, I remember up here down pretty. Uh, so it seemed like every year we were rebuilding that pier, the boathouse. And I mean, we just had stuff happen. We lost 50 some trees in one storm and, and uh, it has stuff to deal with. But it, it made the place better. Because you had the money to fix the things that were broken. 
Oh, yeah, listen to your story. I refixed my, I had to fix my boathouse. Oh, it's yeah. true, right? Wait, it's like, <laughs> wait, oh, I had to buy a, my insurance company came out and put a new yeah. fence up. Yeah. Then nothing happened to yeah. you. Look, then nothing fucking happened to you, yeah. right? Oh, my hail damage fucked yeah. up my car and then I took it to the guy and then I had no more hail. Then nothing happened to you. A baby got yeah, a know. tree on its I know, head. it's not like their parents are like, well, the baby's better than it was. Yeah, right. Like, baby's working better than it always is. New and improved. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> now we have twins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really opened it up, made it a lot better. I don't care what it looks like right after the storm. Yes, because it's not your <laughs> fucking problem. Because it nothing, you never lost anything that you couldn't replace. Right. Right? Like, that's the, that's the other thing. Is like, like, it's all shit you can easily replace. Oh, I lost a couple trees. Oh, I lost a boathouse. Oh, I lost the dock. Who fucking cares? This person lost a kid, man. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't you get it. You can't just fucking like shit another kid out next week. You got to go through a whole process. <laughs> you know, we have to trust the Lord. He makes all things work together for good. Causes all things. But then he caused this. He's fucking yeah, an this asshole. Is, this is it. Like, but it's like this whole argument is like everything that happens is good, right? Yeah. His argument right now is that there's no evil in the world. Yeah. That is, that is, right? his, yeah. All things are good. It's, it's not only destiny and, but destiny's perfect. Right. So yeah. if, because God made destiny, right? Right. So like, uh, destiny, by the way, is the little girl who died in the hurricane. <laughs> so. Was well, destiny's child. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, if this is judgment from God, which I assure you it is. It's because he still loves us. That's why he beats you. <laughs> he only beats you because he loves you. He only beats you. That's the, literally the translation <laughs> is, look, I wouldn't hit you like this if you'd clean the kitchen a little better. If you clean the kitchen better and I didn't love you this much. <laughs> Hebrews 12 say he disciplines those whom he loves. And this is... I have how many? How many abusers get away... Because the Hebrews 12, right? How many abusers in the world get away with beating the shit out of their kids or their wife or somebody else because many, they had a Bible verse that said, it's because I love you. How many fucking shitty repressed marriages where somebody wants to fucking spank their wife is, are they using Hebrews 12, <laughs> right? I only discipline you because I love you. I didn't clean the kitchen hard enough. <laughs> Oh no, the laundry's not done. Come the, on, with the that wife, shit. The, the wife's got a got a strap on cock with Hebrews. <laughs> <laughs> Can guarantee you is I don't care what happens in the next few days and a lot. And if you want to paint Hebrews 12 <laughs> on a strap on, all you have to do is go to adamandeve.com. Enter Gloria at checkout. You'll get 50% off almost any item, a free sex swing and free shipping. Adam and Eve.com, Gloria at checkout. A lot of it is going to look terrible on the news and it's going to be bad for a lot of folks when you're going through it. It is bad. Even for those people who might have lost people, it's pretty bad. I I, I like here because what's not said is like, it's bad for those people for whom it's bad. Yeah. But let's be honest, that's not most of that's us. That's not us. <laughs> High five. <laughs> it's going to work out to be a major, major blessing for this area. Now, Hurricane Maria was a major blessing for Puerto Rico. When is a hurricane like, man, it's a major blessing? We lucked out on these FEMA trailers. <laughs> <laughs> Like, when is it a major blessing? Well, when are the people in like Katrina area like high five for Katrina, guys? Right? Yeah. You can still take bus yeah. tours of the devastation. Yeah. One so uh, like two celebrities came and rebuilt a house. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Penn showed up and was like, Oh no, that's too yeah. much work for me. Yeah, I'll just yeah. do one. I'm Someone just, call Jimmy Carter. Write me down for one. <laughs> I'm I'm good for one. It's like he bought a box of chocolate bars <laughs> from a fucking from a Girl Scout. Put me down for one. I'm good it. for one. Yeah. I got this one. Yeah. I'm gonna take a lot of selfies like, while I build. You're the high roller at your at your daughter's Girl Scout cookie table. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far as it goes. And uh, Lord showed me a few years ago, watch where the floods come. He said, because the natural first, then the spiritual, there will be a flood of the Holy Spirit in those same places. Yeah. That's and sometimes, semen, right? He's talking and, about semen. And right sometimes now. the Holy Spirit turns into a tree and squishes a little girl. <laughs>
Ah, it's a tree spirit. It's a tree spirit. It's fine. <laughs> so it's like wick. They're wicked. <laughs> So we want to thank all of our patrons, but we want to thank our newest patrons specifically, Nicole, Nick, Dirty, Paige, Robert, Al trapped in South Carolina, Betsy, and Cornelius. Thanks so much for your generous you, donations. You. you guys are the reason Glory Hole Studios exists. You're the reason we have an employee. So thank you all for your generous donations. Got a message from Laura. And Laura says, Dear Tom and Cecil, <laughs> I had a dream... That I was trying to tell lots of other people in my dream about a dream that I had inside the dream, but none of the people in my dream wanted to hear about my dream. Ah! That's the best Inception dream I've right. ever heard. It's like it's like Tom in Inception would have that. <laughs> Like if Tom was the main character in Inception, he would just be screaming at that Japanese guy. Lay, I don't care. I don't care at all. Stop telling me about your stupid dream. I don't care about your top. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> we got a message. Um, this is from John. And John says that the holy water cholera story may have been morphed from the Tears of Christ, which was a sewage story that you and I talked about yeah, long for a time long ago. time ago. Yeah. That there's a, a gentleman there uh, that came to QED. Yeah, was it a QED or Tam? I remember we heard him one, Yeah, one or the other. I, I don't think remember that was Tam. No, I think it was Tam. You're right. It I think it was Tam. Yeah. We went to Tam. We heard, heard him speak, and um, his name was Sanal. Yeah, Sanal out of Maruku. Yeah. He got kicked out he of got India. Kicked out of, he, yeah. got, he got kicked out of India because he specifically went to this place and they had said that there was this holy water coming from the statue. He's like, no, it's actually sewage. There's a leaking way to prove pipe. it. Yeah, there's a leaking yeah, pipe, basically. There's a prove it. And, and they didn't want to believe him. Right. And, uh, and, and people were like, they were drinking, drinking the water. It, yeah, and it was a yeah. sewage pipe that they were drinking Fucking out of. Egg. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, there might be, it might be a morphing of that story. It might just, I, it might just be that those two, two newspapers happen to have leads that they didn't talk about because they never mention where they heard about cholera. Right. And then they link specifically to BBC that doesn't talk about the holy water at all. So we got an image and this is from Carter. And I like this. I've seen it around a couple of times. It's an American flag. And it says, <laughs> if you don't stand for this special song, the magic sky cloth won't freedom. <laughs> I love it. We'll post it on this week's like show that notes. Too. That's really uh, I love the wording on that. It's brilliant. <laughs> Magic, Magic sky cloth won't, won't freedom. freedom. I saw it in a couple of places and I thought yeah, it's That's fucking great. brilliant. So thank you, Carter, for sending it in. We got a message. Uh, this is from Sharon. And Sharon said, they already created a Noah's Ark book like we suggested to MJ last week. And it's Awkward Moments Bible. So I'm going to put a link to the image gallery, specifically this particular image. <laughs> And it's just awkward moments, Bible. There's pieces of it where you just see the drowned, the drowned people in the water, and there's a dragon and a bunch of. It looks and no awesome. Smiling at oh, them. It's awesome. It's so great. And everybody's smiling, and the and the uh, look at the two giraffes are smiling. It's great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link to this image on this week's show notes. This book. The awkward moment, moments, Bible. I guess is already something. We got an image um, sent to us from Brian, and Brian sends a. A oh. predator image, and I'm going to put it on this week's show notes. It's great. Oh, so bad. We got a message from Sean, and Sean said that an Australian girl recently refused to sing for the anthem at the school and was bullied by right-wing nutjobs, so they have the same problems in Australia, I guess, as well. Um, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't know what it's like in other countries. Clearly, uh, you know, must be a, a tradition where you're from in Australia. I don't know what it's like in... Uh, I... I, I Vaguely remember people standing in like when I watch the Olympics when they do like the when they do team games there and they sing the specific national yeah. anthem. I think the Olympics might be yeah. a little different because it's nationalistic by nature. Yeah, it's right. like definitional. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I wonder I, I'm curious about Canada and I'm curious about the UK. Yeah. Um you I don't know. know. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, does, yeah. does it, is it do the they case stand in Germany? Up? Yeah. And, and you know, do they, do they stand? Well, in Germany, they hold their arm at a really weird angle, too. <laughs> but like, do, do they stand up? And do, and do they enforce it? Do they say, right. you know, because they, they say at the beginning of every library, please rise, please for, the please rise for the We say it. We say it to, even though you don't have to say it because everybody knows to rise. Right. Um, so I'd be curious to hear from other countries. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. Now, remember, this show is going to release on Monday. So this Saturday, if you're a patron, we're doing a patron only Discord show. 
that's going to be happening Saturday. We're hoping sometime midday, sometime between, I want to say between two and four, we're probably going to do it. Yep. Um, we're going to be doing a, like a full hour, hanging out, talking to people, not only chatting with people as they type to us on Discord, but also doing stories, playing clips, doing our normal shtick. While, and it's a patron-only Discord show. The show will eventually be for patrons after we re will record it and we'll post it for patrons. But if you want to interact with us, you want to hang out with us, remember Saturday is when we're doing it. We'll let you know the time uh, as we get a little closer. We'll let you know what the time is. But, uh, but if you're thinking about becoming a patron, this is a good time to become a patron. You can join our Discord server and hang out. And uh, and it's really fun because the uh, latency on Discord is very short. And so Pete, we are getting messages almost immediately as they come through. And we're able to interact with people on a very, very uh, quick basis, which is very different from what it was like yeah, on Facebook the, it's Live. It's very fun. The yeah. real-time yeah. nature of this is great. Yeah. It's very different than what it was on Facebook Live yeah. because we would say something and a minute later or something, a comment would come through that would be funny, but it's hard to go back to that moment. Right. But with Discord, those, those comments come through and you just laugh as they start pouring out. So, um, but we have a great time with it. So if you want to join us on Discord, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a show and you can join us for our Discord show. That's going to wrap it up for this week. We're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death and towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information, and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.